going. They were representing red, white, and black. Yes. What? Yeah. 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 They look like you come from the football. They come from the cricket team, or the football team. For the football team, but very, very, very cool. What is it? Well, you yes, see nothing. <laughs> All right, so we return for the hour. Check the grey, how the grey looks. Destination. Is it much special? Yeah.
so this is our second day second day because we come yesterday yeah so this is our second day in rome uh we had all this morning i have uncle here with me uncle richard from florida yeah so, so he's spending some time with us right so we're waiting on the bus right now we're going on a little tour um i know one of the places the coliseum i'm not sure about the name of the rest of places but um i'll do videos to show you guys you know so i hope um well you know the, these videos are not posted right now as we uh, we in room are not posting no videos right now because the internet not all that good so when i reach home back then i'll start um posting videos right so stay tuned and hope you all enjoy the videos so far These steps here are to the Vatican, that is where the Pope is, the smallest um, country in the world. You know, they don't need no passport or to go in there or anything, you can just walk in by the gate. Although I think they, they might want to verify, just take a look at your passport or a copy of it or something like that. So this is the hotel where we are staying. I think our room is right up there. It's called the Hotel Museum. The rest of the crew inside there right now. We just waited on the bus as I said. And right now it's very very cool. Gloves up and thing. Just mm -hmm. close my face. <laughs> but look how close you'll be putting that thing on my face, my boy. Yep. You are representing. Double door. <laughs> These are the walls to Vatican. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Buongiorno a tutti. And you know we say buongiorno until uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Afterwards we start to say buonasera. Which means good evening, okay? And we use it until we go to bed. And what do we say when we go to bed? You know that? Good night. Buona notte, buona notte, okay? So it's easy. And we are driving along the walls. You see these big walls on the right hand side. And if you take a look on the right hand side, you could actually see the entrance to the big square in front of St. Peter's, okay? The big major basilica of St. Peter's. And the walls are the walls that uh, goes all around the Vatican State. So you are actually in a position with your hotel, which is incredible. You are just in front of the entrance to the Vatican Museum. I know you have a free day tomorrow and uh, <coughs> of course to go into the Vatican Museum if you do not if you haven't got a ticket can be a bit tough you know you need to stand in a, in a line or otherwise buy your ticket online before to to manage to go past the line and have a, an appointment you know going inside uh, um, to go inside the Vatican Museum where you find the 16th chapel and a lot of other beautiful uh, art. How do they say? It was built more and more 
beg to protect people that lived inside. You will soon, after the red line, uh, take a look on your right hand side and you will have a magnificent view of St. Peter's Basilica. Made by Michelangelo. You can see this beautiful shape of the dome. It took them more than 100 years to build the basilica, so there were many artists and many architectures that worked on the building. So, um, the Holy Angels Castle, Castel Sant'Angelo, and here we are coming up on the side of the river, the Tiber River. We call it Il Tevere in Italian. It is the third longest Tiber, yes. It's the third longest river in Italy, okay? Uh, and it's dividing the city in two halves. And you can see that there are very high walls closing in on the river. It is because this river flooded every year. You know, when the snow melted up in the mountains around Rome, the water in uh, the, the river got so high that the city was flooded. And you will see that during this afternoon when we walk in the historic you have visited the Trevi Fountain you will have free time okay <laughs> Okay, uh, Gianluca explains to me that he has a sort of radar, uh, something automatically that break, uh, pull the brakes. Uh, so that's why we had this moment of panic. <laughs> uh, well, what did I say? You, yes, that we will get off the bus close to Via Veneto, walk down to the Trevi Fountain, and that's where. The of people online waiting because inside you have the mouth of truth okay it is uh, a stone that used to be on top of a well but now it's put on the wall it has a big open mouth you know and according to the legend if you put let's take a look here on the, on the right uh, hand on the left hand side i'm sorry can see the mouth of truth and now we are climbing up a hill with the bus you can feel that you know that Rome in the beginning was built on seven hills okay and we are climbing one of them which is called the Aventine you have a valley on your left hand side and that is the big circus the big arena where we had uh, we had uh, chariot races, okay, during the ancient times. And on the other side, you can see the palaces on the Palatine Hill, okay. The Palatine Hill was the most important hill where the first houses were built when Rome was founded in 753 before Christ. According to the legend, it was two twin boys, Romolo and Remo, that were saved up from the water, you know, they were almost drowning on the river of the Tiber, uh, and uh, a female wolf saved them up from the water, giving them uh, milk to drink, so that's a symbol of the city of Rome. 
uh, and these two twin boys, Romolo and Remo, grew up and became big strong men, uh, built the first houses on the Palatine Hill. Okay. During a period they were prohibited these back, uh, chariots with horses, you know, because we have had some incidents with these poor animals uh, running uh, in this traffic, especially in summertime when it's really hot. It's not a good environment for Helios Hill that you have on the right hand side. So on the Palatine Hills, the emperors built their villa and you can see the ruins of the emperor's palace. He had, of course, fluent water inside, and what you see now, passing through these big arches that almost look like a bridge, actually is an aqueduct, you know, that brought water to the palace. In front of us, we have the uh, Arch of Triumph of Cos Constantine. Okay, and you will soon see it close by because we will see it when we go into the Colosseum that you soon will have in front of us. Okay, so we are closing up to the place where we are meeting our guide and where we will get off the bus. Uh, we haven't handed out the uh, vouchers yet. We should have done that because we will have quite a few little time when we get to the Colosseum. Okay. So remember that the voucher with your name on, you will keep it strong in your hand go through the entrance of Colosseum and then give it to the guide, okay? I am not sure that I can be with you inside the Colosseum because actually I haven't got a ticket. <laughs> so it depends if they let me in anyway. And um, we'll see. So about this time in the video, um, when we were coming off the tour bus, Vidya re-injured her knee. So we opted out of the store. Instead, um, we just took a small walk around, had some coffee, had something to eat, and gave the GoPro to Cordell. Um, and they did some recording for us inside of the Colosseum. Right, so hope you all enjoy it. What I was asking is actually if you hear me well, because maybe the microphone touch my scarf or something and this is annoying you. Can you hear me well? That means yes, that it's well positioned. Okay, I will be the last one in the group, okay? So you follow her and I'll oh, keep following me and mind the children. Don't just pass the ball. Just engaging all the and then they said the bad word in Spanish, but I understood that said no and so oh no. What did they say? They said Conio, Conio is stupid, something oh. like that. No, it's not my language. My language is a little bit. Okay, you will say behind me. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Maria, sei l'ultima? Ok, Maria è stata. Oh, 
always your belonging very well safe in front, okay? Because unfortunately there are very skilled people with light fingers. We don't mind, we don't worry about, but we know it, okay? Hey. One second. Hello. Wait. Hold on a bit. Hold on, hold on. Yes, too fast. Hold on. Too fast. Can you hear us? You don't hear me anymore? No, I so said, can you hear us? No, no, no. Oh, uh, you saying, can down. hear me, so sometimes if I speak too loud or too low, if I'm noisy, please. Serena, what, Serena? just stop me. Yes. Serena, okay. Maria, she say. Okay, let's keep going. Just now? Here, the gloves. <gasps> yeah, ski the gloves. <laughs> Camera man. On Juno. This is 18th century, 1700 about. That was an antique kind of, thank you, restoration on the floor to keep together even the cracking area and the rest is instead after the original. Still standing after the about the Maria? Oh, they don't fall. 
sempre un po' di Maria e sua Lisia, all'invaggio tutti con lui. Vieni, vieni Maria, che siamo in orario. What's your name? I'm Cordell. I'm your actress, Cordell. Cordell. I will be your... Okay. <laughs> oh, it's me. I will be your diva today. Uh, I, like I hope that. so, Cordell. Okay. <laughs> so now we are all here. Look at something I like to observe. Okay. I see some faces. So, watch up. All together. Can you see at the top of that you have holes? Yeah. Just imagine, not the holes on the walls, the one upstairs. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. ticket like ours, papers they were not using yet. On his ticket, on his little tablet, he had the entrance number and the place to go and sit where. Everything was perfectly organized and for free. The entrance here was for free. Before I mentioned Nero, right? Nero was living there. But Nero was the emperor and he was a very rich, absolutely in love for treasure and beauty and he built for him an incredible golden house as I told you see there it's now under restoration and in front of it of this house he had a great lake the lake that was safe of course I think it was of the What is the one with the prom? Ah, e the poi c'è lei, lei è la loro accompagnatrice che normalmente non aveva il bacio. No, non controlliamo, non siamo lì. Okay. Yes, no? Put it above, no, okay. just put it above the box. Yes or not? Put up your hands. No one. Perfect. So we go. Because the only toilets are here. So I keep going. And then I will start somewhere. 
And then you will start to watch too, right? the perimeter which is now allowed in us to walk because they are doing some work and after we will come down again and you will see all the ent all the inside area and not only come here where there is a space for everybody here inside find the floor and then i can start if i put this mic on you Oh. Is that no? fault? Oh, oh, thank you. No, the smile. No, no, no you mic. are actress. Yeah. What is it? A mic. A, a mic. mic. Okay, please yeah. hold. No you can have already a mic. I have already no, a mic. Here. Yes, I know, but doesn't it disturbing? Because normally two mic together, uh, they might it, don't it, work. It shouldn't, together. it shouldn't, it shouldn't. We're hearing you clearly. Are we hearing you? Okay, yeah, okay, okay, very good, because right. they might. <laughs> okay, are you all in? Here. Yeah. So, Colosseum, first of all. I show you something which is already interesting. Just hold it, please help me a little bit. Because I want to show you something which is also here described, but which I also have here on my page. So why am I showing you this? Because as, as I told you before, there was a lake here before the Colosseum. So I'm talking about the here, and then you have the project of the incredible, let's say that is this above, the incredible golden house of Nero. We are about in the uh, 60, 70, on those years, Nero is the emperor, is very important emperor, but he likes very much to give fees to people. I can hold it, okay. To give fees to people. And then that means that people at a certain point get tired. What used to do Nero with so many fees from people was to build for him incredible incredible monument and also a private lake as i told you just before so what happens at a certain point of course the people is not happy they start to be revolting a little bit and in meanwhile there is a general a conductor a strategist in jerusalem fighting against revolters that are not happy with nero in rome far away provinces all belonging anyway to the empire okay so, are you with us? I'm yes. Oh. You are part of our group? Okay, you can come and read beside if you want. Otherwise, I ask money apart. Huh? <laughs> okay, just joking. Anyway, Nero built them this house, the golden house, the lake in front. Meanwhile, people is not happy. And then this man called Vespasian Flavium is a general. He is fighting and he's a very good strategist. Strategist, sorry. And he's there fighting and people of course, it's, uh, I mean, he wins there. In the meantime, Nero starts to have big troubles. A big fire burn most of the areas of Rome all around, apart whatever is in marble or anyway in stone. Because most of the houses around were in wood. All the condominium of the citizens, most of all Rome was built in wood, right? And being built in, in wood, very easy to get fired. I mean, they didn't have the system. I mean, even if they were great engineers, they didn't have the system of control that we have today. So this big fire, the problem is that um, someone has to be guilty. And because of the Christianity getting a little more and more people believing and people following the words of the apostles and of Jesus, this it's a problem for the empire, for the polytheism system, many god system. So this fire, of course, is not the problem of Christians. It's just a problem that it happened by mistake. But the guilty will be Christians. So uh, Nero established that all the terrible accident of fire was guilty of Christians. Meanwhile, little persecution are starting to go on, but. In this time, anyway, just about in the 67, Nero dies. And this strategus that was in Jerusalem has to come back. Because in Rome, they need a new emperor. During one year, in between the 65, 66, about, uh, two, three emperors are elected, but they are not good. And the fourth one, Vespasian Flavium, that was their soldier, Jerusalem general, comes back and is actually the right man. Is the real right man that becomes emperor. What he does is first thing. 
he has to do something for the people, something that gives to them happiness, quietness, to keep them quiet, and food. So what he does, the first thing, he destroyed the Colosseum. How clever, engineering, mind, and of course, uh, coming back from Jerusalem, he was rich. He was rich because, of course, being a winner, that was normal at that time, he has treasure. They took the amenora, all the golden and silver objects that were in the temple. They belonged to the winner. But not only that, many men, many slaves, many people able to work for free, of course, and in a big, big amount. It's sad, but it, this was normal then to sell people, all the houses, all the person had slaves, right? So they buy, there is a big market, they show face, tooth, whatever. And anyway, this gives a lot of money to the emperor, to the system. What do they do with this? It was absolutely necessary at the moment then. They destroyed the, the lake. They emptied. You remember the Romans were very clever with the uh, pipes, with conduction of water, right? So what they, what he does, all a system, incredible engineer, all around the lake, they make a big hole, like he, the one around the castle, you know, deep wall, filled up with the waterproof material, cement and terracotta, whatever was typical, all around, three meters wall protecting all around the wall, this wall underground, and little by little, with a lot of canalization, the water goes forward the Tiber River, which is about a kilometer away from here, and also all along, little by little, of course, with a new system of uh, uh, wings, uh, object like, just imagine, you know the little wings where a little mouse is in the cage, they run and they make it turn. The same system, large, with men or animals inside to make these wings going up, and then going up with the floors. What kind of floors? Arches. You saw already many arches. The arches three times above one above the other, 80 arches each, each floor, and the last floor when you saw the holes for the pools, these are galleries. This is the system of a new theater, the amphitheater Flavium. Colosseum is the nickname. Amphitheater Flavium is the name, Flavium, of the emperor, the new one, that emptied the lake and at its place made this incredible structure. First time, me, many before were the circus, because the Romans anyway liked very much games and blood and uh, uh, competitions, but before they were all in wood, like in our modern circus, and they were moving from a forum, from a place to another, this is the first one instead absolutely clever as a new engineering style, structure. As I told you about four floors, uh, 70,000 people can get in in the system of uh, galleries which are in alternance, you know, some of them, uh, I'll show you after when we go in, some of them are to get in, some of them to get out, some are just there to go, to lead people by the, the seats, and the seats are organized on the platform, which is the ground floor, for the emperors and the senators. They don't even need the ticket. They don't have a number at the entrance. They know exactly where to go and where to sit. Are you with me? No, I think not. Okay, okay, sorry. In a minute, we will move. Nearly. Uh, and so, um, the other people instead, of course, has a, a, a seat to use and an entrance, as I told you before. And the, the, the places depend also from the social rule. So the ground floor or the closer to the platform where there is a sand on the, above the wood platform, the rich and the important. Going up, women and the humble people far away from the platform where the show were very good and see and easy to see. What is the other important secret of the Colosseum that now I show you here? Is the fact that there are different material to pull it up. Travertine, which is this now white here, the rest is a little dirty, of course, pollution. Travertine, which is a heavy stone that it's easy to find because it's not far away from Rome. The careers in the east of Rome were still, today we have travertine, uh, like uh, from the seaside material, calcarium, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tufashu stone, which is lighter, and I show you when I see it, big and strong but lighter and bricks 
bricks much lighter that sometimes they are just under the cover of travertine that are used to you know to to be nicer to show a nicer um, structure which as i told you before is now just the skeleton why so many holes all around for this reason the colosseum was totally covered by marble, beautiful, even uh, uh, thinner pieces of travertine to cover the bricks and the tufo, which are lighter to go one floor above the other and to keep the weight on. Am I clear? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not speaking too much. This after will give us easier style uh, of work. <laughs> and then, of course, look at that. This is what you see now. So what are those holes? The holes, they were containing kind of hooks kind of metallic material to keep on the beautiful platform that were yeah. covering the Colosseum. So it was absolutely beautiful all around. And inside, of course, this is the genius, uh, covering the lighter part and not so uh, luxury, you know, humble like bricks or a stone, but all covered and absolutely beautifully decorated in bronze, marble, uh, better stone. Of the people has to pass. All the groups will go up with the stairs beside, behind me. We will arrive at the top, which is first floor. And this lady will just do the first floor. Anybody else want to do the And you'll be leaving. And I will, I will meet you upstairs. Very good. Wait for us. No, no, you are too young. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just for pushing. Uh, it's too easy, eh? Lazy, lazy. You are too close to the gate. Don't worry. No, no, no. Let's go upstairs. Can you see your booth? Microphone? show you in a minute. Sorry, keep following. I show you all the original truck. Now, not now because there is a lot of people but I can use you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ok, quando la signora ha finito. I show you what is outside, but I think we can go anyway, we are going all around. But here, if you can already face outside, I speak and then you can film it. So you see, of course, again, I think this is kind of scary. you saw in the drawing before and in the reconstruction they were pulled up and look at all the walls inside the underground the underground the first two years with the Vespasian and Titus his first son they were empty and they could also organize navy battles are you okay navy battles but after with Domitian the second son that remained for longer time comparing to father and his son and brother he reorganized all the underground as you saw in the pictures before so stages like maybe two three floor inside underground where all the organization was uh, perfectly managed by the several people not only slaves working also engineers uh, um, architects and then also the person in charge of beasts and gladiators. The gladiators, of course, were like hero for them. Eh? Can you all see? Can I keep talking? Yes, I'm not talking yeah, yeah. Okay, the gladiators were like our football uh, soccer today. They were like hero, the women and also the men. They were watching at this hero, beautiful, strong. They were slaves most of the times. Even if sometimes senators like to play the role of a uh, of, a, of gladiators, so to be loved from women and then other people just like mad for these heroes, right? Not always they were dying, of course by accident, but it was actually more important to keep them alive because they were uh, part of a, of a gymnasiums and in case they were dying, the emperor had to pay the gymnasium. Everybody was for free, but their, uh, their gladiator was better to keep them alive and maybe give to death the prisoners, right, to see some blood. Of course, animals were poor beasts dying very easily, and the games were going on anyway for a long time. As I told you, for a long time, the church, the Christians, the popes, thought that this... Yes. I don't think they saw her. I'm looking for this. <laughs> okay, take your place and you too. That you have a camera to use, so you better go to see the Arch of Constantine. The Palatine, which is the one, the most important one. I don't know what you do. Three. 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 And created the study of Rome. This is maybe legend, maybe true. What is true is certainly that the archaeologists in the last centuries, because the archaeologists started only in 1800, before was just everywhere, everything. But they stopped reusing and then scientifically the archaeology science knowledge started at the end of uh, at the beginning of 1800 so during the many studies that they do they did also on the soil they found it remains of course paleontologists right the one that studied the very archaeological uh, remains they found that the remains under the ground of pieces of wood could be the uh, holding columns in wood of the you know of the ants that were at the beginning of the story of Rome and all the population actually. The seven famous hills, like in which the Palatine, 
until Caesar, Jules Caesar, last uh, leader, after which the empire starts with his adoptive son. One killed him. The other one instead make of him a god, and we will see inside his tomb, but not really the tomb, the place where he was uh, cremated, incinerated, and then, so going on, the story started. Now I want to show you, if you will, this, another photo. You see the monument that you see there? with like a big... Ecco, you know what is this? That was a temple dedicated here, it is, to Venus. Venus was very important, was very important for the Romans because they thought coming from Venus. Anyway, look at what you see. Also, you see the very large, big statues on bronze that was the Colossal, gave him the nickname of Colosseo. And this is what you see now. So you got it? If you are all happy and all the information and photo are taken, I would like to go down and go keep going to the podium. Where? You're keeping it Superstars. I wish to take you there. When you see the terrace, you see how many people are there. From there, you can see after. You see the big monument. You and I will tell you, this is the Venice Square. We will go there walking, and then after. What up, the insider? Yeah. What up? Very good. I see the flower. Cool. I want to pee. Okay, I'm not walking. I'm going to be in the thing. Because I want to give you a few 
informations before we go on. So the olive, Sorry. the vineyards, yeah. the olive, and then the fig trees were the holy trees of the past. Still, of course, we have olive. The olive trees used to give food, I mean, nutrition because of the olive oil, but also light because burning uh, with the little cloth, you know, the little um, light makers, I don't find the words now, they could have light. YouTube. And not electrical at the time. Come all beside me, please, plants. Terracotta Another one, very light, uh, com uh, very simple comparing to the other one. This is dedicated to the bacon. The one that is rocked. But to give us information, we also have there all these barrels where we understand the victory. <laughs>